Sun Devils basketball is a sinking ship right now, and the only thing you can do is watch. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Levels. A special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. And don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcast. Stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter on Richie Brad 36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today. And you'll get 150 in bonus bets if your first bet of five dollars or more wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back into the podcast. Today we are going to be heading to the hardwood instead of the gridiron as we take a look at Sun Devils basketball. We did not have the Sunday episode this past week. So we are taking a closer look today and a far more in-depth look than what you'll normally get on a Sunday because we are in the final stretch now for Sun Devils basketball. And I I don't want to be a complete like doomsday naysayer kind of guy here, but I think the season's over and I think it's been over for a little while. They are they are just plummeting. And that's that's really where this conversation has to start is they are spiraling out of control and they have dropped off in the absolute worst possible time. So this team, don't get me wrong, at no point was this an elite team, at no point was this a great team. However, you were looking at this Sun Devils basketball program as a potential uh, tournament team. They felt like they were trending in that direction, and they had they had a really good start to the year. They were 4-0 in conference play. They were tied atop uh, the, the very tied atop, tied at the top is what I'm trying to say, of the Pac-12 with Oregon at one point in time. And since a 4-0 start, to Pac-12 play, they've dropped to six and seven, and they have lost. Uh, what is that? Se- seven of their last nine games. Like they have just been terrible. And call it as it is, they've not been playing good basketball. They're not making good shots or good decisions. They're not able to rebound, which has been an issue all year. And part of that's because of the lack of size, which has shown up to bite them. Like. There were warts with this team going into the year that we were aware of. And one of the biggest warts was that this team didn't have a lot of size and they're just getting boxed out consistently. They're not rebounding as well as other teams uh, are and as well as other teams can because ASU is playing so much small ball. There is there's a lot of issues that you're seeing with this team. And the Sun Devils have really struggled as of late. Again, they lost seven of their last nine games. And they have just done everything possible to either beat themselves or allow themselves to get absolutely crushed. Like, they have been blowing leads. They have, as a whole, just bad. I I, I don't know what else to call it. Like, and, and you've had a little bit of self-implosion, too. Like, you had the Jose Perez thing uh, that went down during the Colorado game or the, I can't remember. I, I think it was Cal, where he only played the first half and ended up uh, getting benched. Like, there's there's frustration that has been mounting. And, you know, they put it in the past. Jose Perez is back on the court. It's all good. But... These guys are frustrated, and rightfully so. There's there's a lot of ways that these guys have been let down and are letting each other down. And there's a lot of coaching stuff that needs to get uh, kind of squared away and talked about, which we'll touch on a little later on in the podcast. But looking at the state of this team right now and looking at the way these games have been going, 
you're just out of control. Like it's, it's a car crash. All you can do is watch it. It's a sinking ship. All you can do is watch. Like this is not fun to witness. And I have said this pretty much every time we talk about Sun Levels basketball. So let me reiterate the expectations in Tempe are not national championships. Our expectations are to be good enough and to get to the tournament. You are a power five school. You are one of the biggest universities in the country. You can recruit. You can do a little bit of everything. Get to the tournament. An occasional sweet 16 run would be pretty freaking cool. But they just don't do that. And Bobby Hurley has just not been able to find the consistency to be able to get his team to that point in spite of the fact that he does do a really good job recruiting. They've got a top 20 recruiting class next year. He's brought in five stars before. This is this is an ongoing problem, and it feels like this season has been the boiling point of all of the issues that we have seen from the Sun Devils this year. This has, or uh, during during his tenure, I should say, of all the problems that we've seen from the Sun Devils in his tenure, this is the year that really feels like the biggest breaking point. And it's it's just so upsetting. Because here's the thing. like if we, we can play devil's advocate for a second. This was probably supposed to be a down year. Because you had just gone to the tournament and you were replacing four of your starting five. Totally get that. But last year... You had a lot of success with the guys you brought in through the transfer portal. And this year has been the same way. And in fact, you've gotten as good of production of them. Like last year you had Desmond Cambridge, who was the all or nothing shooter. Like that has been replicated with Adam Miller and Jose Perez, who are also able to step in for what was the Devin Cambridge role. And yeah, you don't have a uh, DJ horn. You definitely miss DJ Horn. You don't have Warren Washington. You do have a little bit in uh, in Sean Phillips Jr. when he's on the court. Like it, It's definitely a team that has taken a step back from what it was last year. And one of the things we talked about going into the year was, can you capture lightning in a bottle twice? And the odds were no. And that's what we're seeing. But it's not like your transfer class was horrible. I'd make an argument that certain players are outperforming what you had last year. Like I would tell you that Jose Perez pound for pound is a better transfer uh, than what you got last year out of Desmond Cambridge jr. Like he is just having a far more affected and consistent season. But the problem is none of it has been able to come together for the entirety of the season. And now there's seven games left. You are 12 and 12 and your only hope to get into the tournament is to just somehow run the table. We'll talk about that in a second too, but it's been a rough year and it's been a very frustrating time to be a Sun Devil fan with the basketball team. You see bright spots, man. And then you just see them fall apart and they just have not been able to put together a full 40 minute game on a regular basis. There's games where they look like a more than competent team. And then there's just games where you're like, this just is not a good basketball team. And it feels like that's where we have been standing for the last two months is this is not a good basketball team. They have got a lot of figuring out to do right now, if they're going to be able to turn this thing around and there is time and there is a way that they can do it, but man, they they got, they got a lot of work to do. And we'll talk about that in just one moment. It's the locked on some of those podcasts, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel America's number one sports book right now. New customers get 150 in bonus bets with any winning Five dollar bet. That's hundred and fifty bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players with teams, including quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com 
slash locked on and shoot your shot FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Appreciate you guys, as always, for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Wherever you get those podcasts, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications. A shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. And check out the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming on YouTube and stay up to date with all the biggest news in sports, pro and college. Back into our conversation. Can they turn it around? It's not going to be easy. It is going to be one of the most difficult uh, situations that Bobby Hurley has found himself in in his time in Tempe. And part of that is because his seat has to be on fire right now. I mean, this cannot be this cannot be a situation where Bobby is guaranteed to come back next year. And for somebody that is a pretty big fan of Bobby Hurley, all things considered, and maybe part of it is because I just don't know what else you can get, but this is this is it, man. This has to be your nut up or shut up time. You are at such a disadvantage on the court right now. And coaching has been at the forefront of it. And if they're going to get this ship turned around, they just need, they need the coaching to improve. They need the decision-making to improve. They need the maturity to step up, not just from coach too, like, the players got to be able to rally together too. There's there's so much work that needs to be done, man. There there is so many deficiencies on this team right now. If you are hoping to get it turned around, you just got your work cut out for you cuz there's there's plenty of spots that need to improve. And we've seen some areas improve like I know the free throw percentage was abysmal to start the year, and it's still not good at 65.5% as a team. But you do have uh, three of your starters are above 70%. Uh, Jose Perez has dug himself out of a hole. Jermiah Neal's been getting better. Adam Miller is still an 80% shooter. You have seen some guys start to improve on the line. You take it for what it's worth. Uh, Field goal percentage is what it is. They still can't shoot from three. That sucks. They can't rebound, but they, they are a tough little team and they have been a very feisty, aggressive defense all year. Frankie five finger Collins is, uh, got 72 steals on the year. He's going to do everything he can to get to a hundred. I know he's got his, uh, his eyes on Jason kids, PAC 12 conference record. We'll see what he can do there. There have been good individual performances. There's been improvements throughout the season, but this team is just, they're not getting it done. And unless everything just suddenly clicks, it's it feels really difficult to imagine that they can turn this thing around right now. There's... There's times where I get really excited to watch Sun Level basketball. And it, I'm starting to wonder if it's just because of how much I love Sun Devil athletics. Because when you're watching the game, you're just frustrated by what you're seeing. And there needs to be more accountability for trying to improve and get better. I just feel like we hear the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. This cannot continue to be an issue for the team for the remainder of the year, for the last seven games of the regular season. And however deep you go into the postseason, we need better accountability. We need guys to be able to improve on, on areas that are just killing them right now. Like one of the biggest things I can tell you is Frankie Collins is averaging almost 14 points a game, and he's shooting barely 60% off the line. If Frankie Collins becomes even a 70% free throw shooter, he's a first-team all-pack 12 player, and he still is going to be like an honorable mention at worst. He might be defensive player of the year, but that's the kind of opportunities that you're missing right now. 
is a player of Frankie Collins caliber is just not converting those free opportunities. He's not, he's not getting everything that he can. There's points that are being left on the court right now. Do you feel the same way with uh, Jemai Neal, who's shooting 41.5% from the field and under 30% from deep? Like you, you feel like there are just opportunities here that Jemai is not converting for you. Adam Miller is shooting under 37%. Like shoot or shoot. I get it, but man, is he hot and cold? He's streaky. Like if Adam Miller's on ASU is doing really good. If he's not, I mean, he just, he, he almost blends in to everyone else. You don't even realize that Adam Miller is struggling is just because typically everybody else is there is, there is a lack of true accountability on this team. And when I say that, I mean that in the sense of how do, how do I explain what I'm trying to say? How do I articulate this? There is, there's just, I know what I want to say. I just can't figure out how to say it. This team just doesn't seem to get it. This team has had the same issues all year, and it feels like there just haven't been too many adjustments. Like I said, the free throw percentage has gotten better, but you're still at 65%. You're still not a rebounding team, and at this point, I don't even think it's fixable. I think it, it truly is just a size problem. ASU is just so small. They, they just can't be aggressive off the glass. And I mean, Frankie Collins is averaging 4.6 rebounds a game, which is a uh, second on the team. And he's six one. There's not much you can do when you just are physically unable to do what other teams can do and what they can enforce. There's a lot that's wrong with this team. Can they turn it around? They can, but I just, I, I, I truly don't know how realistic, how fair that is to expect out of this team right now. And it, it kind of brings you wondering what the future holds for this program. We're going to talk about the future of the program. Just one second. This is the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Passion, drive, patience. It's what brings home the winning trophy, and it's what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And the eBay Guaranteed Fit means your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because of the eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. One more time, wherever you get your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications. A shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. And check out the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It'll keep you up to date with all the biggest stories from college and pros across every league. Wrapping up our conversation, what does the future hold? Let's start here. Is Bobby Hurley's job safe? I I have said this many a times and I will continue to say it and it's a very pessimistic viewpoint. I can absolutely own that. It's very pessimistic. But if you move on from Hurley, what 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 is this program, what does this university offer in terms of basketball to bring in a big name? Like my biggest fear here and it might be entirely unwarranted. Like, let me know in the comments if you guys think I'm just being way too pessimistic. Because I absolutely could be. I truly don't know what a potential top candidate for a head coaching spot would see at Arizona State. Like, you see the potential. Like, they can recruit. It's a big university. But... 
this is not not a good program. This is not a program that is known for winning. It's not a program that's known for national championships, which they don't have any in basketball. They they are they are a middling power five conference program. And it's not even for a lack of bringing in talented kids. Like you've had very quality players over the last decade plus, and you've had some all timers, but you haven't been able to put together consistency with it. And you haven't been able to have teams that have sustained success. Like Bobby Hurley has been here. This is ninth season. He's been in the tournament three times. That's, that's not good. At all. Like I said, the expectations aren't high at Arizona State, but we want to go dancing. We want to go to March Madness. That shouldn't be an overly difficult expectation for a program that is one of the biggest in the country and is a power five team. Are you going to go every year? No, of course you're not. Unless you're unless you're a blue blood program, you're not going every year. But going once every three years at best. Mm -mm, That ain't it. That ain't it. Especially when you're going one and done. It's not like you're making deep runs. Like I said, I would love to go to the Sweet 16 once. Just to have that feeling of anything's possible. We haven't gotten to feel that with Bobby Hurley. I I don't think it's even been close. And we've had some good teams. We have had some really good teams under Bobby Hurley. This team is not bad. It's got its flaws for sure. But man, it's just an underachieving team. And you have to have a serious conversation about Bobby Hurley being the future of the team or not. And even if he is, who's coming back? And lo and behold, if he's not... Who's coming back? The only ones I feel confident returning for next year would be Adam Miller, Sean Phillips, probably Kamari Lands, and hopefully Frankie Collins. Everyone else would probably either transfer for a graduate or just if they have another year of eligibility to transfer. Or some of these guys are going to run out like Perez and Alonzo Gaffney. But besides the the real guys I feel confident with would be Adam Miller, Sean Phillips, Kamari Lands. I feel good that Frankie Collins would be back. But I don't know if he would have a graduate transfer. I think he's a redshirt junior, something like that. So he might be able to have a one more transfer. And then Adam Miller, Sean Phillips, they just transferred. Adam Phillips already, or Adam Phillips, Adam Miller already a two time transfer. Like those guys feel safe to come back. Same with Kamari. Outside of that, man, you could lose a lot of guys again. And you lost four of your five starters last year, plus guys like Austin Nunez. It's like there was a lot of losses. And you can tell even though you brought in some very talented guys. And like I like I previously said, I feel like there are guys on this team that are better than what you brought in last year. And you're still struggling. Now imagine you have to get a new head coach. You are going to lose guys on this team for sure. And your top 20 recruiting class is going to look very different, if not entirely different. This is, this is a very... Not good spot that the Sun Devils basketball program has found themselves in. The only way that you can get this thing turned around is if you just go on an absolute tear to end the season. And even then, you're probably not a tournament team. But if you can find a way to go, let's say, four and three in the last seven games and win at least two games in the tournament, at at least you have some kind of confidence. But... There is there is so, so many things that this program needs to improve on. It really starts at the top. But what the future holds, I just don't know. Because it, it really just depends on if Bobby Hurley's back. Because if Hurley's back, then 
at least you know that there will be some continuity. But if he's not, you're looking at a full reblow or full blown rebuild. That's what you're looking at. And you're already doing that with football. The good news with football is you are way in the right direction right now. Basketball is trending way down. And even if Hurley is fired, again, maybe I'm just a pessimist because at the end of the day, it's a power five job. And guys want those kind of positions. But I don't know if Arizona State can get a pick of the litter or if they can even get a really, really good candidate. I just don't. I, I don't know that anybody views Arizona State as that opportunity. Let me know if I'm crazy. Let me know if I'm just being uh, Debbie Downer. Let me know. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments as well, though, of the state of the Sun Devils basketball team. Are you guys even watching games? I, I hope that you guys are and given support. I wouldn't blame you if you're not. It's very difficult to watch. But let me know in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter. You can find me at RichieBrad36, the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. A shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. And remember, wherever you're getting your podcast, they hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Appreciate you guys, as always, for tuning in for this basketball edition of the podcast. Don't worry. We're still going to be talking basketball. We're still going to be talking football. We're going to keep you up to date on everything that's going on with Arizona State Sun Devils athletics. So stay tuned. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Till then, you keep it locked right here on Locked On